Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, and we have a Rich TV Live, and I'm here with our very special guest, Chris Donaldson. How are you doing today, Chris? Hi, Rich. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Fantastic. I'm excited to have you on the show. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in exploration and mining. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I've been in the uh, <clears throat> public and private uh, capital space for about 25 years. The last uh, 10 years, I was with a company called Western Copper and Gold, uh, which has a very large copper gold uh, project up in the Yukon. I was director of corporate development for, for them. Uh, just as I was leaving, we brought in uh, Rio Tinto as a, a strategic uh, investor. Um, so yeah, real good success with that company. And then I got a chance to uh, join up with Craig Perry that, that many of your viewers uh, may know. And uh, I joined up with him and, and his Inventive Capital team and uh, started Outback Goldfields. So um, in my first gig as a, as a CEO, and I, I guess it's been about one year now. Congratulations on your one year. And we love gold stocks here, especially early stage gold stocks. You guys can see the symbol here, OZ in Canada, OZBKF in America. And they are also listed in Frankfurt, Germany for our European investors. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your current assets? Sure. So we, we acquired four properties in and around the Fosterville mine in the historic uh, Victorian gold fields. Um, the Foster Oil Mine, of course, uh, many of you may know, made a discovery about uh, six years ago and, and they found something called the Swan Zone and uh, made them the, the highest grade, highest margin mine in the world. So, and, you know, once that happened, there, there's been a staking rush uh, or, and their second gold rush uh, that, that's gone on. Um, we were fortunate enough to get the, these assets uh, last year, but from a group that had acquired them about five years ago and had the foresight to, to see what was happening in the staking rush there. And so we were able to, to acquire these and, and now we're working them. Uh, I think we've got, we've done some exploration on three of the four properties and are in full swing right now. Wow. And why would you say these locations are the most interesting for the company? Yeah, so I mean, we, we and I've said this before, you know, we have a bit of a criteria, you know, when, when selecting assets and, you know, what's the size of the prize, what's the cost of the test and, and what's the chance of success. Um, and in this case, you know, the size of the prize is, is a Fosterville style. Um, it's, a, it's as good as you get. Um, so we're, we're definitely elephant hunting for, for what we're looking for here. The cost of the test, I mean, it's a mining jurisdiction. It goes back to the 1850s when the first uh, gold rush uh, occurred and, and they, they uh, had tremendous success and made Australia the richest company, uh, country in the world. Um, and then the chance of success, well, if, you, if you're going to look for gold, you know, a good place to start is, is where there's already a lot of gold and, and we're right next to a number of, of um, historic mines and also producing mines. Um, and, you know, the, the story of the Victorian gold fields is, is they, you know, back in the 1850s, they, they mined at or near surface and then stopped because they hit uh, cover and they didn't have the technology to go b below. So they've mined 80 million ounces of gold in the district and uh, the geologists now believe there's another 80 million uh, ounces yet to be discovered below that cover. So that's, that's what sparked the, uh, the, the second gold rush. Now, we love to understand the catalysts that are coming. That's why we love to do these interviews with CEOs and our community loves to kind of understand what's happening next. So what are some of the upcoming milestones for Outback Gold that will possibly get investors excited? Well, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a good time. Uh, it, it's uh, certainly been a tough summer and, and that's put some pressure on our share price. And it was tough only because in, in June I was, uh, you know, uh, all ramped up and put out a, an announcement that we were starting our program. And uh, Victoria had a very, very hard lockdown that came out about two two days later. So, um, for instance, we weren't even able to get our drill that was planned to come to site because the drill wasn't allowed to cross straight state lines. So, you know, it's been a tough summer in the, in the junior equities and uh, we also didn't have news flow. Um, but we're drilling now and kind of now doing the program that we had planned in June. Um, have cash in the bank and uh, a lot of news flow, you know, to come here. Now, gold prices had gone up really nicely previous to 2021. They were on a serious run. And in the beginning of 2021, they were also very strong, but they've kind of flattened out over the remaining part of 2021. Where do you see prices going in 2022 with all the talk of inflation happening? 
Yeah, I mean, well, you hit it on that head there. I mean, with with the amount of money that's being printed around the world, um, eventually, uh, you know, it's, it's going to have an impact on on the various currencies. And, and historically, you know, people start coming into gold at, at that time. So, yeah, I mean, we, 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 had, we hit 2,000, I guess, a year and a half or so ago, and then have pulled back to kind of the 1,800 range. And, and there's been a lot of consolidation there. Um, it certainly won't be a straight line, but you know all signs are pointing that it's, it's going to go up. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see two thousand dollar gold here in the in the next uh, in the next few months. And I, you know, personally, I think that's the hurl mark that that really gets uh, investors interested. Um, we saw it last time when when you know generalists started uh, pouring into the market when when they hit about two thousand dollar gold. Um, and I think it's coming. Or I know it's coming at, at some point here, and I think it's uh, sooner than most people think. I agree with you. I think it's coming as well. We saw 2000 before. We're in pretty much an everything bull market. Bitcoin's exploding, stocks are exploding, all time highs all across the board. And the only thing that, and even oil, and the only thing that's really lagging is gold. So I believe that gold will have their time and it's coming and it's coming soon, which really means that this is a great buying opportunity for investors at these levels. And we've been talking about it with Barrett Gold near 52 week lows. Kinross Gold near 52 week lows. We've actually been identifying great buying opportunities in the gold sector. And with a small cap gold company like yourselves, this might be the perfect time for investors to start really looking into this opportunity. Now, in saying that, what sets you guys apart from your competition in the sector? Yeah, well, I mean, we're early stage uh, junior mining. So it, I mean, it's high risk, but high reward. And uh, but we think we've minimized, you know, the risks as best as we can by being in the top jurisdiction in the world right now, by being surrounded by um, uh, majors. I mean, one, one of our properties actually touches uh, Fosterville and, and Kirkland Lake, which is now Agnico Eagle. On one side, it touches uh, Newmont Gold on the other side. They like the area and they came in a, a, as well. Um, and but, but probably the, the you know we're well capitalized and probably our, our best separator is is the team that we put together. So our chairman Craig Perry, um, many of your viewers might know from his successes as well. So he's a, the the um, chairman of Skeena Resources, ISO Energy was a founder of, and Next Gen, uh, Visla Silver. Um, you know several of those are, are billion plus companies, and they all started out you know fairly uh, humbly you know in, in kind of our stage as well, and he was able to grow them. Part of the that is he's got a great following um, of investors behind him. We were, you know, we were able to raise eleven million dollars last year, non-brokered. Um, you know, a lot of that was because of his following. Um, some of that was, I, ho I hope, was kind of uh, because of mine. Um, but we do have a great ba backing and inf infrastructure here. We've put together. I'm not a geologist, but we put together a, a team both in Australia and in, in Vancouver. Uh, you know, which is packed with uh, great experience in in the, uh, the gold fields and the, uh, you know with our geologists. Um, and now it's just a matter of executing. So we're, um, you know, our program is just starting. We, we have enough money to, to get us through the year and, and beyond. Um, and we should have some steady news flow, which is key for, for junior mining companies here. Um, and we think we have some, some very uh, high tenor targets here to, to go after. Now you touch base a little bit about your team. I'd love to know a little bit more. Can you talk a little bit about your key individuals and what each of them brings as far as experience in mining and capital markets. Yeah, I mean, Craig, Craig would be at the top of that list. Uh, I mean, he's 25 years in the in the business and he was uh, 10 years with Rio uh, beforehand. I listed all the companies that he, he's now grown um, before. And he, he's the one who had, the, you know, he had uh, people asking him to take over these projects and, and, um, and list them on a Canadian or North American market. Um, and which is which is what he is his has done here. So he, I mean, he's certainly uh, key to to putting the deal together and helping push it forward. Um, you know, one of the challenge with uh, the the COVID lockdown is I'm in based in Vancouver and I can't get down there. So we we were fortunate enough to retain the the geologist that that purchased these properties, who's uh, been um, you know working them for the last five years, uh, 25 year geologist down there. So he's put together a team. We pulled in the, uh, the the former exploration manager for the Ballarat mine, which is adjacent to our property. It's, a, it's an active mine. Now he actually lives on one of the tenements. And then probably key for me up, up in Vancouver,
mover is is a guy named Chris Leslie who uh, did his PhD in, in uh, codes in Tasmania and has worked extensively in the Victorian gold fields. He is from Vancouver and came home uh, a couple of years ago because of COVID, and he he's helping uh, coordinate things from up here. Fantastic. Now here at Rich TV Live, we really are fundamental traders. We love to understand the share structure, fundamentals, the cash on hand, debt to equity ratio. Uh, debts, if there's none, that's even better. Can you talk us through your current share structure, how much is held by insiders, and what you will be doing to attract more institutional investment alongside more retail investors? Yeah, so I mean, we have uh, just under 60 million shares uh, that are out, so Very fairly good. tightly held. Uh, insiders have a, a little over 10%. Uh, that that number is growing. Both both the chairman and myself uh, were have been in the market buying this week, and of course that's all public uh, information as well. Um, so that's that's our share structure. We raised eleven million dollars last year. Last reported uh, amount was uh, about eight million um, in the bank. So so we're in good shape uh, there. You know, at, at our stage, it's n it's never prudent for a junior mining company with, without revenues to to go into debt. So we have uh, we don't have any debt on that. Right. Um, so that. That's, that's where we are right now. So we're in good shape on that side. Um, I would say our shareholder base is we've got 40% uh, out of uh, Australia and the balance is in, in, in uh, North America, Vancouver, Toronto and, and uh, a little bit in the States. Um, what am I doing for you know for the retail investors? Well, you know it's it's a bit of a, a function of, of news flow, and, and I'm just now starting to get get out there as as we have planned to, to you know we should have news every two three weeks or, or so uh, for the next you know eight eight to ten months. Um, so certainly doing that and doing the various conferences and so on. In terms of in, in attracting institutions, uh, at our size, you know, these institutions like to write much bigger checks. Um, so, you know, I have certainly talked with a number of them and they, they want to see some results. So, um, you know, that's kind of that would be the next leg up. I need to make a discovery here. Uh, and then I think we'll, we'll get those, those types of groups uh, coming in. And a good example of that is a company called E79 Resources, very similar to us we came out about the same time they had one good ex extremely good uh, uh, intercept and they they went up about 10x um, wow. and then we we're able to get an investment immediately from Sprott uh, and uh, and then they topped up on on, on top of that so um, you know we're in good good position it's just a function of, of us executing and, and and finding some gold Chris we've got shareholders that are going to be watching this video from all over the world and investors that are going to be looking at this company specifically, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you or the company if they have any questions? Yeah, happy uh, for anybody to reach out. Uh, info at outbackgoldfields.com. Uh, we're actually quite active on on Twitter as well. So it's outback uh, underscore uh, gf. Or uh, you can even call me directly. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it the old-fashioned way and just pick up the phone and call. And, and the number there is 604-900-3450. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Chris. And I must let everybody know that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, this is a company that is well-capitalized with a tight share structure that is now drilling, that is still with a very baby market cap. So I think this is a company that is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Put on your watch list, put on your radar. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you so much for your time today. The CEO of Outback Goldfields, Chris Donaldson. Thanks, Rich. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Love to have you back on the show. If you have any big breaking news, anything you want to talk about, anything you just want to discuss, love to invite you back on the show. Thank you so much for your time. And for all of you guys that are watching at home, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.